Joining us right now is Ohio Congressman Steve Chabot, also the chairman of the House Small Business Committee. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Maria. It's great to be with you. Yeah, this I want to talk about small business and what you're doing in terms of trying to loosen things up because we're talking all morning about the regulatory environment continuing to choke business. But let me begin on Indiana here, sir, because obviously tomorrow night is a big night for the entire party. Uh, what are you expecting out of Indiana and what would you say uh, is most important to look at as we watch this primary? Well, nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. And as you mentioned in the previous report, it's kind of interesting. You got to poll with uh, one candidate up by 15 and another poll with the other candidate by, up by 15. So I don't think anybody knows for sure what's going to happen. It's up to the people of in Indiana. It's going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah, in terms of small business and the business environment right now, what's most needed in terms of moving the needle on growth? Well, this is National Small Business Week, and as chair of the committee, as you mentioned, um, I think it's very important to emphasize how important small business is to our country. Uh, 28 million small businesses all across the country. Half the people that get up and go to work go to work for a small business. And most importantly, seven, seven out of every 10 new jobs are created uh, by a small business in this country. So we need to um, have policies that come out of Washington help small businesses and not hurt them. And too often, uh, it's hurting them is, is exactly what's come out of government, uh, both at the federal level and, and also at the local level. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing this morning. I mean, you, you've got Halliburton dropping the deal that it was going to do with Baker Hughes. This is just a couple of a month after Pfizer walked away on the Allergan deal. So it's, I know it's small business week, but, but again, it's small to medium to large business all getting affected by the regulatory environment that's getting worse. Right, and to the Congress, well, they, but I, I want to ask you a question about small business because I've heard sure. as the daughter of small business owners who got out of the business, they could no longer operate it. We've heard politicians say this my entire lifetime uh, that we need to do more for yeah. small business. But in it, it just and mm -hmm. every administration has problems. But how are you going to roll back some of the regulations that have crushed small businesses just in the last seven years? It's nearly impossible. Well, you're right. You're right. You get a lot of talk, but not a whole lot of action. What we need to do is reduce the amount of regulations that come out of Washington every day. Uh, my district is here in Cincinnati. I like to use the example of if you put all the paperwork that they have to deal with, all the new regulations, it would go all the way from Great American Ballpark, where the Cincinnati Reds play, to the Eiffel Tower at Kings Island, 22 miles up the road. So more and more regulations come out. Not only do we need to stop new ones, but we need to cut back on a lot of the regulations that they're dealing with. We also need to simplify the tax code. We need to lower taxes and simplify it. It's virtually impossible uh, to understand the income tax code nowadays. If I had brought it here this morning, it would be eight Bibles thick and nobody would understand it. And small businesses also, and larger businesses too, uh, if they're going to expand, create more jobs, they need money. They need access to capital. Uh, and legislation that was passed uh, early in the Obama administration called Dodd-Frank has put a whole new level of bureaucracy on, on the banks and credit unions so it's tougher for them to loan money uh, to businesses so they can either get started to begin with or expand and create more jobs. So we need to turn things around in Washington to make it easier on business folks and not more difficult. We don't hear anybody saying that though. None of the candidates when they do talk about jobs they say I'm going to create jobs. I'm going to do this. I want to hear somebody say I'm going to get out of the way and let businesses conduct themselves and remove these regulations. We don't hear anybody talking about Jeb removing Bush regulations. Did, but no. we know well, but nobody was really listening when Jeb Bush was talking. No, it's true. I mean, th this is one of the tenets I think of the Republican um, of the Republican front runners. I mean, you know, Donald Trump has talked about it. Ted Cruz has talked about it. One of their things that they want to do is roll back the regulatory environment. Yep. Now, let me ask you this, Congressman, because Hillary Clinton says that she wants to be the small business president. Um, she said she is talking about this. Well, she's talking about it, but if you look at what she has pushed for, both when she was in the United States Senate and to probably a lesser degree as Secretary of State, uh, it's more and more regulations. Uh, she was for uh, Dodd-Frank. Uh, she was for Obamacare. And Obamacare is probably the epitome of, of what's wrong. Um, you took basically a health care system, which was the best in the world, not perfect, but was better than most, uh, and they made it much worse. You could have you could have gotten more people uh, health care that didn't have it without 
without messing up everybody else's yeah. health care. That's fact, what Obamacare has done. Th there are small businesses right now that will not hire more than 49 employees. Because if you That's have right. 50 employees or more, uh, Michael, you, yeah. you have to be forced to pay benefits and it's a lot more expensive for a company. That's why you're seeing small business turn full-time jobs into part-time jobs and cut people to under 50. They're finding ways to skate around this, and you know, we could say the jobs market looks strong, but A, that it is late cycle. B, that's also something that um, you know, just shows that you know, the, the quality of jobs is perhaps going down. I, you know, it makes me think maybe perhaps wages aren't going up. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I'm hopeful here, and Congressman, you may disagree with this, I'm hopeful that once Hillary stops running against Bernie, she's going to get more pragmatic, move to the center, and maybe we'll get something viable from her. We'll see. Congressman, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, your efforts, <laughs> to, the timeline on this is what, in terms of uh, these, uh, th this bill? Uh, well, we're pushing to, to reduce the amount of regulations on a, on a constant basis. Uh, we, need to, we need to get rid of Obamacare. We have tried to get rid of it. The president uh, has vetoed a measure that we got on his desk. Um, we need to make sure that the tax code is simplified. You know, a whole range of things we need to do. Right. Some of the candidates have talked about it, but not nearly enough. Uh, and Hillary, if you look at her actions, they've been just the opposite uh, of what we need to do. So the time frame, let's get attention on it, especially this week, since it's National Small Business Week, but let's not let it stop there. Let's push for it for the rest of the year, and let's hold these candidates uh, to what they're saying, uh, right. and let's talk to them. That ought to be one of the questions the press, I hope, presses all these candidates about, both now in the primary and in the general election, which is coming right around the corner. Congressman, good to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you, Maria. Congressman Chabot there. Make sure